morning. Um, thank you very much for joining us this morning to what is the first in a series that we have called Supporting Success. Um, to start with, I'll just introduce myself. I'm Jenny Reardon. I'm the head of HR of Gatekeeper um, HR at Ricks and K Solicitors. And we provide HR support to a whole uh, number of clients, um, both either on a retainer or ad hoc basis. Um, I'm Camada Spaniak. Um, I'm one of the uh, recruitment managers at Gerard White. Uh, I've been doing recruitment for 12 years now. Um, Gerard White are based in Tunbridge Wells, but we do UK based um, recruitment, well, a little bit of international as well, in lots of different areas and markets. Hello, I'm Elaine Abs. I'm an employment solicitor at Ricks and Kay. So the three topics that we are going to be discussing today are employee attraction and retention, salary and pay strategies and workplace well-being. Just in terms of housekeeping, you will have the opportunity if you have any questions that you would like to ask us, feel free to do so in the chat box and we will leave any answers to the end of the session. But as I say, please feel free as we go through the discussion to, to pop any questions that you've got in that chat. Um, we are also recording today, so we will ensure that all the attendees receive a um, copy of the recording and also for handout, we'll ensure that all the main points that we that we discussed today are included in that handout. And ideally, um, if we would very much appreciate it if you could provide us with your feedback. We'll provide a feedback sheet as part of the documents that we send through to you. Um, so yeah, feedback on anything about the discussion and also any suggestions for future topics that you might have and uh, that we can use for future uh, webinars. So, okay, so let's move on to the first uh, section, which is about employee attraction and retention. So I'm sure many of you are aware that from a business perspective, um, attracting and retaining staff is a key um, issue for, for many businesses across the UK. And it's interesting that in 2023, the average tenure of an employee was 4.1 years, with nearly 14% turnover also in 2023. And when you bear in mind that the cost um, of replacing an employee on average is 25,000, you know, that has quite an impact on any business, small or large. And interestingly enough, in 2024, the predicted um, it is predicted that one in five employees will leave their current employer. So obviously that that retention and recruitment of staff is key. So bearing all that in mind, Cam, in your experience as a professional recruiter, what do you find are the priority, uh, priorities for an employer in relation to recruitment and retaining staff? Yeah, I think the first thing that's important to do is kind of almost define the difference between recruitment and um, and retention and recruitment putting it simply is attracting people to your business whereas retention is obviously keeping good people so I think you know there are three key points um, the first one obviously uh, business leaders are always thinking about costs within the business and as you mentioned it is expensive to to find new people and that's kind of it takes into account both people doing it themselves, obviously, you know, having internal recruitment teams or, you know, being a HR manager and, and having to do it yourself. Um, and obviously, if you are in your position, HR manager, trying to do it yourself, you're not a professional at doing that. You're an expert at what you do. But, you know, you're also trying to do another job as well and, and trying to balance all of that is hard. So, you know, even us in in recruitment we use agencies sometimes to find our people so i totally appreciate that uh, with the cost you need to keep that in mind but you know it's also about your strategy um, and keeping a really clear mind on that um, you know what is your strategy is it about growing your business is it about um you know the the kind of keeping uh, sorry growing the people that you've got within the business as well so new people can obviously introduce new ideas they can introduce potentially new work um and it's all things like that um and that you know is about having the right team so if you have got the right team you can think about succession planning you can think about you know the training that everybody needs and, and so that kind of links in obviously to the retention side of things and and with that the important fact is that i think you know you need to be aware of is making sure that your salary and your benefits are you know competitive and, and where they should be and so regularly reviewing that um obviously as i've said keeping people happy 
We're going to talk a little bit about one to ones, um, you know, so that's really key. But also, you know, fundamentally, if you keep your people, you, you stop or reduce the amount that you're going to have to backfill. And obviously, as we've said, that links into to the cost of that. So I think ultimately what a business leader needs to be thinking about is, yes, there's going to be a cost, but you want to be putting that cost into growing your business as opposed to, you know, having to just tread water, basically, um, and, you know, replacing your existing staff. OK. So I'm going to flip this to you then. Um, <laughs> so from like an employee's perspective, um, you know, what do you think is about, you know, attracting somebody into into a new role? Or perhaps I, I should answer that. Yeah, I suppose. Probably, that probably is as a recruiter. It's probably a question more appropriate. Yeah, you. yeah sorry. Um, so I think, um, you know, there is. The age old proverb of, um, you know, a an employee will join a company, but they will leave a manager. And I think, you know, from I'm a manager and, and that hurts, you know, when people leave. Um, so, you know, you, you need to make sure that, you know, you, you've got the right people in place and that. But, you know, salaries are um, massive. You know, you, you, as you mentioned earlier. It's a, a consideration that salaries have been going up. People are really aware of, um, you know, the cost of living crisis. Um, and that's why we go to work, really, I suppose. Um, flexible working, I think, is, you know, a key thing as well. There, there's been so much or so many people that have been working from home during COVID. And I'm finding that a lot of my clients are now wanting people to come back into the office more. Um, and whether candidates actually want that or not is a, a is a different thing, really. Um, but people are definitely looking for, you know, more flexibility. Um, and I think with people coming back into the office as well, it's, you know, about having that culture. It's, it's really lonely working on your own. All, all of us during COVID were working at home, um, you know, and, and lots of people like to have that kind of you know open culture I suppose um training progression obviously is always a key thing for why people move on as well um you know if you feel as though you're limited a bit of a glass ceiling then you know it's about possibly having to move on in order to get that and then I think diversity and inclusion is a is a key talking point at the moment um you know if you're working somewhere where for example it's all men or it's all women or all older people or younger people then that can you know generally be a, a reason why a lot of people you know do move on um but you know from obviously i mentioned there about uh, career development uh, what do you think from kind of like how can hr support on that okay um, so uh, there's, there's lots of things that HR can do in order to facilitate it, but I think initially there needs to be leadership buy and then buy in, and there needs to be an overarching strategy in terms of learning development. That is key. Um, you need to ensure that you've got robust and transparent processes in place so that people have an opportunity to, to discuss their development. Now, whether that is through um, one to ones, annual appraisals, quarterly check ins, there's a whole number of vehicles in which different businesses will use. But I think it's actually having the opportunity to discuss that development or career progression. And I think along with that goes um, the necessity to train your managers to make sure that your managers have the skills to undertake some um, appraisal or quarterly check-in and do that well yeah and um, rather than it just being um you know a piece of paper that gets signed off once a, a month or once a quarter making sure that your your managers understand the importance and have the skills to be able to deliver that yeah um performance review appropriately i think it's also key to make sure that you create clear and realistic goals when you have those um those discussions yeah make sure that the employee has signed on to those so it's not just a one-way street that, that those goals have been reached in agreement and i think it's also very um key to make sure that you clearly communicate career opportunities and promotions um 
the, the process of doing that to all your employees. You know, there have been occasion where I've come across employees who don't understand what they need to do in order to take that next step mm. up the ladder. And, you know, it's really the responsibility of the leadership and the managers to ensure that that process is clear. Yeah. And you obviously need to ensure that that um, your business needs are aligned with your career opportunities. Um, you know, that there's no point in having an opportunity. Uh, or putting out an opportunity that actually the, the business doesn't support so you need to ensure that whatever which again why it's why it's it's really important to make sure you've got an overarching strategy so that that does link back into your business strategy yeah um and just being aware that whilst we're talking about career development and lots of people do want development in their career um, in terms of progression, but there is also a number of people in your businesses that maybe just want to develop in their current role. And that is equally as important to make sure that you understand what that ex the expectation of that yeah. employee is and the things that you can do to improve, develop their skills in their current role rather than necessarily looking for the next um, progression. Yeah. And I think it's really key because it is very clear that um, lack of career development is one of the main reasons that employees will leave. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's a recent um, report where it was determined that companies that prioritise that employee development piece um, see 24.3% business growth more so than, than companies that don't. Oh, wow. So it is, it is, it is a mm -hmm. real key. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. Elaine, you know, obviously flexible working you know, continues to be a thing that I talk to probably 95% of the candidates that I speak to. So, you know, I understand obviously there's change and there's legislation coming soon. Yes, so, in uh, in fact, next Saturday on April the 6th. Oh, OK. Um, I can't believe it's April. Yeah. <laughs> um, th there's a right to request flexible working, make the request that is, rather than have it, um, that's coming in from day one um, on the 6th of April. And prior to this, most people will probably know that on it took 26 weeks of working for your employer before you could actually make the request. Yeah. So that's coming in next uh, Saturday, 6th of April. And then later on in the year, everyone um, uh, will probably hear, if you're interested in this kind of thing, that the rules are going to change even further and you can make two requests a year rather than one a year. Um, and you can uh, you, you, you can present a case to your employer that, that um, the, the, the reasons you want it, but this this the new legislation um, is going to take away the the possibility of an employer requiring you to make a case yourself for why that would that request would suit the business. So you don't have to say that in a request. So you don't need to justify. No, it. you don't need to oh, justify okay. it. Um, and uh, it, you know, looking employers looking at flexible working. The way they approach that has changed hugely since since COVID, uh, and most employers um, will not have that initial resistance by refusing to to engage and refusing refusing the request. Uh, they'll know that that's you know working flexibly obviously um, in, it ha can have advantages for businesses as well as employees. Yeah, and goes back to the whole retention. Piece, yeah, doesn't it? absolutely. And and Cam, you'll know that people actually before they even go to the interview uh, are asking you about whether they're going to be able to um, ask the employer to work flexibly yeah yeah it's a big thing absolutely absolutely no oh, fantastic so um that's a really good answer thank you very much <laughs> um let's move on to the next okay. um yeah. topic so salary and pay strategies um and you know I've, I've got some interesting facts for you so the expected pay um for 2024 um, is going to increase by 3% in public services and uh, public, sorry, public sector and probably about 4% um, in the private sector, um, which is in line roughly with um, the um, uh, the inflation rate, which at the moment is, is I think, 3.4% or 3.8%. Um, also, national minimum wage, obviously, is going to be going up um, for all ages as well. And it's um, it's over 9% in, um, in, in some categories. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jenny, I mean, you know, what do you think an employer should, you know, consider when they're carrying out a, a salary review? OK, so I think it is really important to prepare, to do your research, to understand your market, to have some idea from a um, as to what your competitors are doing in the mar market. And there's lots of ways in which you can gather that data. There's benchmarking, 
providers. Um, obviously, you can do your own market research, go online. You know, we've all gone on to the, the job websites. Not They don't necessarily all have salary information on them, but it's quite a good source to get a, a general idea. Use your agency, agency. exactly. <laughs> um, which we have done um, and do do. Um, use your agency. If you do use agencies to recruit, they are a really good source because they're very alive to the marketplace yeah. and your competitors and, and, and what it is likely you're going to have to pay for a very specific type of job role. Yeah. So absolutely do that research is, is key. Yeah. Um, I know, you know, a, a lot of businesses, especially at the moment, um, you know, are, are looking at what they can afford, and and that is all about affordability from a uh, a business perspective. Yeah. Many businesses will just apply an inflation rate um, across yeah. the board. Others will look at personal performance, and again, that's a really good way of doing it. If if you've got the ability to do that, you know, look at your previous year's appraisals, look at what that employee is delivering to the business. If you've got financials that you can put into the equation, yeah. Target. you know, targets, what you know, how, how they perform from a financial perspective in any particular yeah. year, and use that data. But make sure that you are using it in an objective way that you're able if needs be, to justify any decisions that you make as regards yeah. awarding one employee, you know, somewhat more than another. Um, it is, that is really key. So yeah. make sure that if you are going to differentiate between employees, that, that you're able to um, very objectively justify those decisions. Yeah. And I think it's also being mindful of pay gaps. Um, I mean, a recent um, ONS data shows that despite all the work that various business apparently are trying to do in order to um, remove the, the gender pay gaps, actually it has increased and is now up by 8.3%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it's not just about gender, it's about a whole um, variety of things, but it is really important when you are looking at your sal- salaries across your business to make sure that you identify the same or similar jobs and look at look at how people are being paid. Yeah, absolutely. And then from like an employment law perspective, are, are there any specific, um, you know, legislation, is there any specific legislation that goes along li- along those lines? There's legislation in regard to pay between men and women. Yeah. So that's contained in the Equality Act. Uh, It's equal pay legislation. Yeah. Um, And so under that, um, but men and women who do an equal, carry out an equal role, um, which is considered equal, um, they are in their pay must be equal. Yeah. uh, Unless there's a material factor, but so so that there 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 is a reason that the employer can justify for that difference. Um, And most equal pay claims are incredibly difficult to, to to make so employers aren't going to be facing huge numbers of them but it is important for an employer to have a look at their business look throughout and just make sure they do an audit yeah to to, to sort of prepare prepare themselves as everyone is going to make a challenge and if they if they in their audit uh, can find anomalies then they need to try to address those uh, you know find a strategy to to think about how they can justify or rectify the situation um so there there is isn't any law to say that as uh, taking away the male female uh, differential there isn't any law to say that pay has to be fair yeah um so it's so it's generally you know people do talk about their salaries at work much more nowadays and so anyone who's going to be dissatisfied on wanting to leave if they find out that their colleague is on vastly amount a a greater salary and in fact they're carrying out exactly the same role so look at fairness yeah absolutely um good okay so um yeah oh i've got this moving <laughs> oh, hold it for a second <laughs> shall i put it down i think that's the best thing yeah no, just, just leave it yep okay, okay i just don't want it to fall on top of your head <laughs> i can hold it okay sorry about that <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, what advice you'd give candidates that they're, um, you know, when they're in a negotiation with their employer about their salary? Yeah, yeah. it's difficult. Yeah, I'll be my question. I think you know, I speak to candidates throughout their career. You know, whether they're looking for a new role, I or I also have lots of candidates that you know will just ask for advice, really, just like you know you would ask mm-hmm. us. Employees ask us too. So the same kind of applies in that. You know, if you're looking for a, a, an increase from your current employer, it's prep, prep, prep. What have you added to that business? You know, um, you know, what what have you 
whether that is a financial aspect or also you know supporting other members of staff and you know as I say value add mm -hmm. um but also making sure that you know you're on the correct salary um and so you know that's through exactly the same channels of uh, finding out what your work is it. yeah exactly so you know I always say to candidates as well be prepared that a pay rise might not be immediate if you ask for it it might not happen but if that is the case fine but what do I need to do in order to you know uh, to, to get to the next stage really um, and I think as well it's about considering the bigger picture for a lot of employees. You know, are you going to get greater exposure by staying where you are, or are you going to get better exposure in the long and, and hit your long term goal by potentially moving on? But salary isn't always everything. You know, yes, it's an important factor of why we go to work. Of course it is, but it's not everything. So I always say to, uh, you know, employees, speak to your employer before if that is the driving factor that you just want to pay rise speak to them before and before if you're leaving yeah 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 exactly <laughs> exactly and then if you do get another job then the biggest piece of advice I always say to people is don't accept a counter offer and I think that's important for me to raise from you know obviously we've got HR managers that are listening to us at the moment I don't think necessarily counter offers are the way forward to keep your staff. You should be recognising what they're worth already. And it's all it goes back to all of those points that, you know, we've already covered, um, you know, but counter offers. Yeah, they're not the way forward to get a, a new uh, to get a pay rise at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> OK, thank you, Cam. So. Um, sort of moving on from that, then, as you say, pay is not the only um, consideration a candidate or a current employee will be looking at when, yeah. they consider, when they consider their pay package. So what should employers consider um, actual, sorry, employers should not consider actual pay but look at the remuneration package as a whole. Yeah. So what other benefits from your experience are employees keen to see? Yeah, uh, as you say, it's not all about money. I think a lot of the time people just want recognition. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, for example, like uh, Gerard White, we have a, a benefit. It's called Perk Box. It gives discounts uh, for local for shopping all over the place, you know. But a big thing that we really like internally is that you can give kudos to your colleagues. Your managers can give kudos to, uh, you know, their their team members as well. Um, and we also do a monthly all hands call, which is everybody in the business. Um, you know, if they work remotely, they dial in. If they're in the office, obviously they're present. Um, and it's where we're able to let people know about what's happening within the business. But a big part, again, is that we have a, a specific section where you can nominate your colleagues for certain things. You know, it, it generally tends to be around our core values. But, um, you know, just to be able to go, my God, look, you know, Sarah, you did an amazing job on that. Well done. And that's really key. Lots yeah. of businesses, we do that at Ricks and K, have kudos. It's and that's really really awesome. Key. So important. But, you know, in terms, of, in terms of the benefits side of things, you know, lots of companies are really looking into it. And I think it is key because if you are comparing two salaries, for example, you know, two job offers, and they're the same, benefits is going to be a, a bit of a feature. So, you know, lots of people are really conscious about pension contributions now. You don't have to just have the government standard. You, you can enhance that if you want. Um, you know, it you that's that's a big thing, but also holiday entitlement. Um, you know, so being I know you guys at Ricks and K have got that that you have the ability to buy and sell holiday. Mm. And some companies allow you to be able to carry that over as well, mm. um, which is is key. I've known of a candidate who um you know every time negotiates a little bit more holiday and actually that's more important for her than having a bigger salary sometimes um flexible working as we mentioned is key it's oh it's a massive benefit you know even if it's just that you need to be at home for a delivery or you know i don't know the boilers being serviced or whatever you know lots of people are really interested in that and you know the the chance to be involved in charity days as well. People really like that. And from an employer point of view, you know, corporate responsibility is key. You know, the ability to be able to blast that out on social media as well, you know, is, is really interesting. And that 
is, is great for attracting new staff as well. And and things like that don't necessarily cost a business money. Yeah, and that's, you know, if, if as times are difficult currently, you know, there are other ways, you know, just a simple thank you at the end of the day yeah. and, and an uh, acknowledgement of a good piece of work that somebody's done. Yeah. They're all key that don't necessarily cost. Absolutely. Money. Absolutely. Or, you know, bonuses. And that can be linked to their performance as well. Um, you know, private medical insurance, dental covered. Is it just for you? Thing. Is it for your family, et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know, life insurance in some cases. Mm. Um, but what I always say is obviously you need to take advice from HMRC because some of those are going to affect the, yeah. the bottom line, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, obviously I've, I've mentioned a few things there which mm. could come into salary sacrifice um you know what what's your what's just, your take on that <laughs> what employees are uh, you know, they do ask about salary sacrifice and employ, employers uh are, ha, ha, have offered this it's a way of an employer an employee having um having less less the well employee has less of their salary that's subject to tax national yeah. choice and in return for that they get some kind of benefit which is not not a cash benefit from them from their employment so for example um uh, uh, there's uh, pension uh, an impact on pension and the, the the employer another benefit that they can offer that's not not a cash benefit is a cycle to work scheme yeah. child, child care it, uh nursery uh, that's offered on the premises at the, at the workplace is, is another kind of benefit um, and in fact in 2018 the government reduced the number of salary sacrifice related benefits okay. um, so people who, who previously were, a, were able to apply for childcare vouchers um, after 2018 they haven't, that system is no longer um, in existence but people who applied for it before can continue to have that benefit if they're, if they're still working with the same employer. Okay. Um, so salary sacrifices um, are something to look at and it's something that people ask about. Yeah, interesting. Um, so I'm going to move us on to the next okay. topic of workplace well-being. Um, so what you know Jenny in what way would you kind of recommend an employer could support an employee's well-being okay well again there is a myriad of them and again it's really important that the initial step is to ensure that you've got buy-in from your leadership team um, and and the the recognition and appreciation of, of knowing that having a fit healthy uh workforce yeah. is has a direct impact on their individual performance yeah. i mean there's a lot there's a lot of um studies out there that that clearly demonstrate that yeah. if you've got a, a a healthy workforce you your your success will, will you know increase uh, increase yeah so how that supports what shape that support takes as i say there's a, there's a whole plethora of, of um resources uh employee assistance programs are um quite a, a common one now that, that many companies have adopted uh, there's lots of providers out there it's really important when you look at your the provider that you research and and make sure that it's the right fit for your um employee group so in an assistance program jenny can you get counseling um very many of them do have some counseling some don't but the majority have, have do have counseling mm -hmm. um and they'll cover anything from you know um sort of family matters to financial um mm. matters there's, there's a, you know the, mm. most most of them will provide some guidance counseling or even signposting in some instances mm. to to the relevant resource so as i say it's 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 a relatively low cost um but very often well used resource mm. uh, to yeah. have an employee assistance program um ensuring that as we've already discussed, the whole you've got some form of flexible, agile, hybrid working in place yeah. because there's lots of people out there who have got um, carer re responsibilities mm -hmm. or are parents, and you know really value um, that that level of flexibility from their employer, mm -hmm. and that in itself has an impact on their general well-being. Yeah, and um, making sure that the work environment and the job design is is right for for um, everybody. You can have health and wellness programs, and again, there's lots of you know from yoga to meditation to all sorts of things. And um, you know, you that there is a provider that provides most everything these days. Mm -hmm. Um, 
one of my clients actually had yoga teachers come in at lunchtime yeah, yeah. and then they had um like per- chefs coming in and teaching them how to you know cook things yeah. at lunchtime as well yeah, yeah it's really that all adds to that that sense of yeah. well-being doesn't it yeah and, um, and so it, you know, sometimes people require their counseling appointments within the work time so it's yeah. kind of a, a new thing that actually employers are considering allowing people time off from work to actually within the working hours to go for yeah. appointments yeah. and that's really yeah. helpful I mean at the end of the day what any employer is looking for is a fit healthy yeah. employee who's who mm. attends the workplace yeah. and all, all those sorts of things will have an impact so it is really important to consider your sort of well-being strategy within your business and, mm. and what you want to include mm. and training think, managers yeah I mean I think it yes yeah, Certainly training managers, making sure that you've got open an open door policy yeah. and clear communication that all your policies and procedures with regards to well-being are well communicated. And, yeah, it's really important to have well-trained managers. I know it's often called soft skills um, and I understand why it's called soft skills. But actually, I always say to managers that managing staff is probably the hardest aspect mm. of their role. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's ensuring that as again as leaders of the business that you've trained your managers to to have that level of soft skill Mm. that they need in order to manage their teams and that you know that is key Mm. and and also ensuring that when you do have we talked about one-to-ones appraisals quarter reviews previously but not when you go into those not just having a discussion about how somebody is performing but actually how are they doing you know is there anything you can help with is there anything that you should be aware of that maybe they've not had an opportunity to speak to you about so it's it's about knowing your employees so that you can then um, respond appropriately and also um, engaging with staff um, making sure that that if if you do put a program together for general well-being within the workplace that you've got some feedback mechanisms so that they can tell you actually this has been well utilized and this isn't I mean mm. a lot of these providers are EAP providers you know although they won't give you confidential information they'll give yeah. you stats on usage and that, yeah. that's key to see whether or not um, it has been it is being well utilized mm. and if it isn't then maybe you need to talk to staff about what they might feel that is more beneficial yeah. for them. Well, there's no point paying for something if no, then not, exactly. it's not being used, yeah. does it? It's, it's yeah. completely wasted. But as I say, all of those, all of the things that I've just mentioned um, do contribute to people's positive uh, mental health and general well-being. Yeah. And therefore, that has an impact on your bottom line as a business. Yeah, so I mean, it's, it is a key consideration. Yeah. And I think, Absolutely. I think, managed boards of companies are actually ha- you know they're having this on their on their agendas yeah so, and so you know if they, if they are seen as the board is seen to be in touch about things like this and rather more I- emotionally intelligent yeah. than, than historically yeah. boards company boards to be you know, from that buy-in you know it, that that encourages people to feel more open about asking for well-being support yeah um, absolutely it's ingrained yeah absolutely Okay, and so Cam, are you finding any new trends in terms of what a candidate is looking for when they're considering an employer in terms of sort of wellbeing initiatives? Yeah. Is there anything specific? I think, you know, mental health is a massive, massive topic at the moment. Everybody is become, you know, is aware and becoming more aware, which I think is great. And, and we need to talk about mental health. So, you know, I think it can impact um somebody's decision but I think it's more you know for example like as you said a lot of firms have got EAP and and that's great um but you need to do your research on them because you know some are better than others um but you know also flexibility so one of my friends recently she she posted on Facebook um that her company is allowing they call it a green hour so you've got your lunch hour but they're also allowed an extra hour a week um to go and do something green um so for her she's a horse rider um she was out for a hack on her horse and I was just like that's great and I think you know it's appreciating that we are people we're not machines mm. and therefore there are other elements that kind of you know motivate us and, and can keep us switched on at work mm. and, and therefore you know when you are at work you're using mm. your time to the full you know full capacity really so it's creative thinking isn't yeah. it yeah exactly you know loads of, of people have got fruit in the office to just kind of get people to mm. start thinking a bit healthier but mm. you know obviously there's a lot of businesses that are wanting to encourage their staff back in. So, Gerard, what we've got a snack 
box to where everybody we haven't you got know, that no they need to get on that um but you know it's just it's a nice kind of mm. small reward you know yeah um wellness days there's mm. something as well to to consider but you know i don't think any of these are individually yeah. going to make maybe something. more about the culture of that absolutely inside. you know and and just giving that impression well not so much just giving the impression but actually doing it you know yeah. and caring about oh, your people it. you know understanding that as i say you're not just a machine you're a person and and so part of that is you know the supportiveness of an organization and like you said understanding your your stuff what makes them tick outside of work yeah you know and what are those impacts going to have child care and you know ill parents or whatever mm-hmm. really um yeah okay. so um so elaine you know again new legislation that's that's going to be coming in um and i mentioned there about caring what's yeah. going on with carers leave just april? that there is a, a a right coming in, in again on april the 6th um which has been discussed many you know for, for many many months um so finally it's coming in and employee each employee can have a week seven days okay. per year um, th- that they can take time off work to care for someone um, who's a dependent okay. um, and they don't have to prove that person is, is dependent they sim- simply talk to their employer and okay. make a request as a formal way of re- making the request yeah um, and uh, usefully uh, you can take the days off it as one day a week or half day a week. Okay. you can't take it in chunks of less than a half day yeah but um, and you don't have to take the days together so that you know over a year there's there's an ability to have that number of days yeah and it is unpaid and it is unpaid yeah, yeah. do you have to kind of prove did you sorry you no you don't you don't have to prove that you're caring for someone okay no, it's interesting so but we're near the end of the talk i think aren't we yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. okay so uh, thank you very much for listening do we have any questions before we conclude? we're just right. being passed over some yeah. questions okay so, so uh, the first question is, is the process for making the qu- request flexible working the same as it always has been? Elaine, excuse me. Yes, it, it actually it is. There's not there's nothing that's changing. It's just um, you, you can in most employers have got a flexible working policy. Uh, and under that policy, there's a there's a, a formal form uh, that people can fill in or equally uh, you can send an, an email to your employer um and you can you can request it that way the the procedure um is much less complicated than it was when initially the request for request for flexible working came in and um it, it, it employers have to just deal with these things reasonably um so as soon as the manager receives that request they they should refer to their policy and and uh, go forward like that excellent um so, oh, I think this will be a question for me. What do you think are the three key things a company can do to attract new staff? I think the biggest thing is your kind of shop window. And when I, when I say that, I'm talking about like the website, because you can give so much away about the culture that you've got, the benefits that you've got, you know, uh, obviously trying to attract people directly. It cuts cuts us out but <laughs> you know it will reduce the spend on that um but also you know on the flip side of that part partnering with an agency for all of the reasons that that were mentioned um number three i would say definitely your perception within the market um you know i think people are so aware now and there's so much information out there on the internet like glassdoor for example loads of candidates are using that now what's glassdoor so glassdoor is where the employees uh, of the company yeah. will give feedback okay. okay so it's unbiased mm. obviously you know you've got client reviews obviously on trust pilots and, and everything else but glassdoor is employee specific mm. But I'm going to add a fourth thing in there. I'm going to be a bit cheeky. Um, <laughs> communication, you know, it, communication from the business. There is nothing more off-putting for a candidate than applying for a role and not hearing anything back. Yeah. Or I've had candidates in the past that have specifically, and I've written a, a blog about this actually, specifically accepting a role over another one because the employer made the offer really, really quickly and acted swiftly mm. and they thought, that's great because it's obviously mm. kind of decision making. And I think that's especially key when many businesses, there is a shortage of, of skilled staff. Oh, big time. There are more vacancies out there mm. than there are quality candidates. And therefore, actually, mm. 
make you know if, if you see somebody you think they're right for the job move move quickly yeah. don't don't, don't delay, delay at all delay. yeah absolutely yeah. okay so um who's this question for how often do you think that line managers should have a well-being type check-in with their employees is monthly enough do you think shall i take this one yeah so i mean i don't think there's any hard and fast rules mm. i think it that it's important that you know you know your staff well and therefore you know how regularly those check-ins should happen for some people it might be weekly for others it might be monthly others it might be quarterly you know there is no there is no hard and fast rules it, it's just being um aware enough about your team Mm. So that if you are noticing anything different or you you feel somebody's maybe not behaving um, in, in the same way they would normally, um, you know, give them the opportunity to have a chat. Yeah. But, but, you know, I, I, and be careful not to be oppressive about yes, it. Yes, exactly. Mm. So some yeah. people can feel, OK, I'm having too many to check in. What's, yeah. what's yeah. wrong? Yeah. yeah. So it needs to be but, well-being. Yes. Yeah. But again, ask, ask the employee. Yeah. If, if, you, if you're yeah. having a discussion about things generally, you know, say to them, um, what would you know, suit you? what what best suits you? I'd like mm. to do it every month. Is that going to be too much or mm. not enough? Yeah. Um, you know, and then you can agree. Being enough. cared about, yeah. isn't it? Mm. You know, yeah. so yeah, but it's been feeling valued and part of your team. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, okay. is that it? Yes, thank Fantastic. you. So I'm going to thank you all so much for attending. Thank you guys for mm. you know you. taking the time to to speak. Uh, to me. Um, so as Jenny said, we're going to be sending out a recording and a handout to you guys um, and there are going to be further webinars. Um, they're probably going to be every quarter, but a date is going to be confirmed. Um, and like you said, we would really welcome any suggestions on topics that maybe you'd like to see. Um, and so you'll see that there's a, a bit on the feedback form that you'll have um, on that. So if you could do that, that would be amazing. And we'll attempt not to have a scenery malfunction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've bought it out. Malfunction. Thank you so much. Thank you.